Welcome Wii fans, in this video I'll be showing you the different ways how to set up your Wii console to your HD TVs and even how to get it looking from this over to this. I'm Jay from rightsprite.co.uk, an independent retro gamer with a dedicated web store for your retro gaming needs. By all means, head to the link provided below. Now you may not be a stranger to these HDMI adapters. Some of these are ranging from dirt cheap to still very budget friendly. Here are some of the most popular ones I've noticed currently in the market, in which to say Nintendo has never commercially sold any HDMI adapters themselves for the Nintendo Wii even though this did originally come out for the 7th generation consoles next to the 360 and the PlayStation 3, which those consoles had HDMI output built in, which has made Nintendo Wii fans crying out for a simple HDMI solution for this awesome system since its release. Oh, and there are of course more of these adapters out there, but reading the reviews, they don't really seem promising, and of course, I do like to keep this video pretty short and simple. By all means, I would still like to hear your recommendations in the comment section below, as this video is just only my opinion. Now with the Nintendo Wii with millions of pre-owned ones out there, it is a very affordable system that can still be a lot of fun and appreciated today with a plethora of family friendly games that would not break the bank. But most if not all new TVs that are released today will accept the original cables as an input that it came with. To start off, the cheapest solution is with one of these composite the HDMI converters, where results at best will look something like this. And this is because the composite cable is carrying over a weak video signal that was designed originally for the fat CRT TVs that we had back in the day. I could go deeper on this, but let's keep this video simple and not make this an hour long video. But in short, just stay away from these. Another option brought to us was this component cable where Nintendo did officially release their own which boosted the image quality from a 480 interlay signal to a 480 progressive. More on the difference on that coming soon in this video. There are plenty of third party ones to choose out there, ranging from a pretty cheap price to more on average about £30. But still as my current TV and I know a lot of people out there still do not have this connection as well, leaving us with a HDMI connection only. A few years back I did purchase the component to HDMI converter and it did serve me very well but this component video output is just not as strong as what you would get with a HDMI connection. And it's just not practical by having all this cable jungle in your setup with the use of another plug just to get your Wii setup on your screen. Another problem with newer current TVs is that they won't accept a 480i or even a 480p signal in the first place because the resolution is just too small for it to even pick up. For you purists out there where convenience of space and budget is not a problem, you could get yourself a CRT TV with an RGB SCAR cable hooked up for great results or even better, a PVM monitor that accepts component cables getting the best of both worlds with a progressive image on a CRT TV. A very pricey way to do this. Another option is to purchase a HDMI mod board, which again is pretty pricey and requires disassembling and soldering skills. A lot of time and funds, but in short, will provide you with perhaps the best results to get HDMI output. But we're not here for that. We're just after a more practical, quicker, and more affordable method just to get a Nintendo Wii on a HD TVs. So our first adapter is this generic cheap Wii 2 HDMI that can be found on Amazon or easily around in a local CEX store. It's all plastic built, but does fit in pretty nicely with an audio jack output. Next, we wanna head straight into the settings of the Wii and make sure we got that 480p selected. with the widescreen set on, unless you do have a HD screen that has a 4x3 ratio. Safe to say that this does work, you first may be noticing that it's not very clear. The factors to consider is that we are working with a 480p resolution. Today's time, our standard is around 1080p or even 4K. Higher the resolution, of course, the better image quality and there are many more factors with a high resolution, but the 480p is sat way down here on the scale of resolutions. 
Another main factor with these adapters is how well it will convert the capable analog only video out signal, come straight out of the Wii console and then convert that to a digital signal. 480p can actually have a great clear picture if it is handled correctly. I have experienced better quality with other consoles and devices. This adapter when compared to the original composite will give you that nice step up in quality as it is tapping into the component signal coming out and giving us that progressive image. It does have a pretty nice balance with the colors, but it does add video noise, which is pretty hard to see when I'm capturing this video. But if I do boost up this brightness, you may be able to see what I'm on about. As well, I notice these white noise specs that are just scattering around on the screen. All this can create a visual and motion blur, which is just not great for the eyes and seems to be a recurring problem with a lot of these adapters. A test I like to run is its compatibility with a image resolution upscaler like the M Classic. I did do a dedicated video on this great piece of kit. Of course, you will find that in the description box below. But as you can see with this generic Wii to HDMI adapter, there is no luck at all. Next up is the grey Wii HDMI adapter, which states on the front that it has a full 1080p output. But don't be fooled, this like every other adapter that says this only has a full ATP output. Now this one does handle the clarity slightly better than of that generic Weed HDMI white adapter. But now let's boost up that brightness to find if there's any noise. And there definitely is a lot less signal noise coming out with this adapter, which is definitely an improvement. But when comparing this to that white Weed HDMI adapter, the color balance is slightly off, in which I hope does come across in this video. It is more obvious when I see this on my main TV, it kind of looks like it changes the color of the temperature, giving it a light brown filter. After a while of gaming and testing some Mario Double Dash, man that is such a great game, I started to notice a flaw with the sound output. I hope you can also notice the sound popping. Whilst in video production, this is where I noticed with the sound that is captured from all these adapters that this grey one did have a higher volume input, which is probably what is causing the problem. Next up is one from Portholic Weed HDMI, which has been stated by Nerd Techie to be the best overall to get, so I had to give this one a go. Already, we do have a step up with this packaging design with a protective case around this adapter. Again, it is stating that it's 1080p, which is just a bunch of lies because we're always getting 480p, but we also get a warranty and discount card, which is a lovely touch. This time around, I've experienced the more accurate color balance, much like from the generic white one that you saw first time around, but we have that extra bit of clarity, much like from the gray HDMI, so we're getting best of both worlds. But we are still getting a bit of noise signal, but it's not as prominent as from the other two. We're still getting some of those white specs like we had from the previous adapters, but less again. At the moment, I would definitely say the Patholic is taking the lead. Now for the M Classic test, this was a slightly weird experience, but I did manage to get a work with some tinkering. So setting this up as you would do anyway, just plug in the adapter and then the HDMI cable with the power turned on with the upscaling switched up as well. I would plug this in and I get no signal. But then if I were to remove the adapter, then plug in just the HDMI, I would get a signal. But then if I were to remove the HDMI cable and plug the adapter back in, I would then eventually get a signal. It's not exactly a convenient way to get this upscaler working on this, but it's nice to see that it is up and running. When it came to the black Wii to HDMI adapter and that smaller profile Mayflash one that you see, I was getting problems capturing the footage. But when I would see this on my main TV, I was getting a lot of the problems that I stated previous with the other adapters, with even some slight screen tearing, so I can't really recommend these ones. But I do have some faith with the Bitfunk and the Auto Ulet, with Bitfunk being known for releasing adapters in the past, which I've had some ups and down experience, but this Auto Ulet has some good reviews. As you can already tell, Bitfunk went all out with this packaging design, which is pretty awesome. It does have a very professional touch. It is a shame that it did get damaged in the post. It is packed with a full color manual with multiple languages, a HDMI cable as well, with that funky groovy velcro straps by Bitfunk. 
This time around, the adapter has a light metal noise protector shell, which is nice to see. And then we have a plastic input. We got no audio jack output, but we do have a nice bright green LED power indicator, which I do prefer when it comes to these, just to ensure you that the power is getting to these adapters. So the results, well, the clarity is there, but the brightness levels and colors are slightly off. You can really tell when you compare this adapter with the gray adapter that I shown earlier. Here is the Bitfunk once again. And here is the gray Weed HDMI adapter. Showing this next to the Portholic one that I showed earlier with that color correction all right, you can really tell the difference. The strength though with the Bitfunk adapter is the audio levels are all great to use and that video noise signal is very low, if not much at all. And even I didn't notice any of those white specks floating around. Another plus with the Bitfunk is that it is compatible with my M Classic adapter with a simple plug and play. Last but not least is this Auto Ulet, or however you pronounce this name. This is by eSync. This has been popping up quite recently and has been having some good reviews. With that price a little bit higher than what you've seen from the previous adapters that I've been showing, but a little bit less than that bit of funk I've just shown. It's great to see that we do have some packaging here to give them that protection on delivery. It also does come with a HDMI cable, and I do like this all white profile. It is all plastic built, but we do have that bridge cable from the connector to the adapter, which should improve on any noise interference. We do have that audio jack output again, and I really do like this blue power indicator. Personally, I would say this is my favorite designed adapter. But what are the results? Well, the clarity is there, the brightness levels and colors are all well balanced, and the audio levels are all fine. When you do compare this with the Portholic, which was my favorite so far, you may notice that the Auto ULED is slightly dimmer, but I would say that this one has slightly better balance. It also has a very minimal next to no noise interference, but I did notice some very minor white dots scattering, but at this point of testing, I believe I found the issue was with the HDMI cable that this came with. So I swapped this out with a different one and the white dots were gone. So I do recommend when purchasing this adapter, just use a different HDMI cable. And yes, it is safe to say that it is compatible with the M Classic, just simple plug and play. This is my personal favorite Wii to HDMI adapter. So now this is great when playing on my Nintendo Wii, but by all means, this is not perfect and you will get better results with something like a HDMI board. But with this being compatible with my capture card and the M Classic with the simple plug and play, I am very happy with this one. And of course, you will find a purchase link provided in the section below. Now for this section of the video is for you guys out there with their Wii modded and are using USB Loader GX, which is a very popular program and I'm sure a lot of you modders are using this. To put it simple, the Wii video output is designed with a miss correction resolution output and filter that does create a slight blur and stretch effect. Different games were designed with a different video resolution output where natively the Wii will then add a filter and resolution of its own. Very bizarre and unique when it comes to gaming consoles to get a clearer video output. To do this simply by heading to the settings and head to the loader settings and then you will find the deflicker filter. I just selected this off to off extended as standard and then you can select the video to have its original design output by selecting frame buffer. This will then remove that filter effect and then have the correct video resolution output of the game, which will then give you that sharper image to see on your TV and also have that clearer image for upscalers like the M Classic to do a better job. But of course, we're not finished there just yet. You may have noticed throughout this entire video that the captured image is not really filling the entire screen. This is due to the original output resolution of the console being 480p and the way the video output is designed from the console. To fix this, the best way to do this simply is just to adjust your size screen settings on your TV. I'm sure a lot of the HD TVs do have this option available. And bam, there we go. We have the clearest image from the Wii filling up your entire screen. <laughs> 
Well, it's been quite of a long journey for myself to get to this point, and I do appreciate you guys sticking and watching this video. I do hope this it has helped the fellow Nintendo Wii gamers out there, and of course, I love to hear your recommendation and setup and experiences below. So as always, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, hit that button. If you want to support this channel, click subscribe, leave a comment below, and I'll catch you a lot on the next video.